So we're going to make a projectile or a bullet in this next video. So we have the project files, uh, same as we were using on the last one. And if we hit play at the minute, you'll notice that we have a gun, um, but there's no functionality put in place for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to build in um, a fire function and we're going to make a bullet projectile, which will get spawned whenever we, we press that button. So the first thing to do is we're going to check our inputs. So in Unreal, we can set up some default inputs using the input manager, similar to uh, other game engines like Unity. So if we go to edit and project settings, if we scroll down this list, there's a section called input. So at the minute we have a interact input and we have a fire input. So the fire input is bound to the left mouse button, but we can also give it a secondary function. So for this one, we'll add a gamepad and we'll go with gamepad left, or gamepad, sorry, right trigger. There we go. So that means if the left mouse button is clicked or the gamepad right trigger is pressed, it'll call this thing called uh, fire. So on the interact, you notice we got a bound to E. We can set that uh, to a gamepad function as well. So face button at bottom. So that would be A on an Xbox pad, X on a PlayStation pad. And we can add more of these later on if we need. So if we push um, the plus here, we can add in a new action map. So that might be where we add in a reload. And we decide that for reload, we want to press the R key. And then we might want to add further to this. So these are project settings. So every time you start a new project, it's good practice to come in here, make sure these are set up. And then once you set them up, if you script based on these rather than on hard key inputs, um, everything will be fine for your project going forward. So the first thing we want to do is we want to call on that. So what we're going to do is I am inside my content here. Um, there's some folders in place where you can click and go through. But sometimes what I find easier is I like to filter them. So you get your filters here. Um, so I'm going to filter by blueprint class. So now I'm only looking at the blueprint classes inside my contents folder. So for this one, we're going to use a first person character. Uh, so I'm going to double click on this to open it. There's one I made earlier. So what we're going to do is the, you notice our stick input setup and our movement setup. So we're going to move down here to one side and we're going to work in this little area. So if we right click here and we call fire, you know, in this now action events, fire exists. So that's a button press. And just as a quick test to see if this works is we're going to drag off whenever it's pressed and we're going to call print string and then inside this print string, we're just gonna write fire. So there's some more options on the print strings. If you sit here, you'll get a list. Um, you can change the color mode. You can change the duration that they're on screen. So we'll say that these will appear on screen for three seconds. We're gonna hit compile, and then we're going to hit play. So now every time I click, fire is being called. So we know that that's working fine. So the next thing that we need is we need a bullet component that we're gonna spawn every time we click fire. Um, so to do that, we're just gonna pop back out here um, to our main kind of content area and we're gonna make a new blueprint. So we're gonna right click blueprint class and we're gonna choose an actor. We call this B score BP underscore bullet. And straight away now we're gonna double click on that to open it. So same as in the last video where we made the light tutorial. Um, in this one it's empty to begin with, so we're gonna add a couple of components. So the first component is I'm gonna add a particle. So we're gonna add a particle system. Now, whenever we click on this, it's empty by default. 
this is where we come over here we click on this come over to our details panel which updates depending on what you're selecting and from here we're going to add in a particle so these are the particles that are listed inside my project um, so we have one made already which is assault rifle underscore tracer so if we click on that you see now that appears so if i was to populate the world with some of these blueprints and then hit play we're going to see that actor just sitting there in 3d space okay you notice it's going on and off a little bit and that's because the particle system is set um, to turn itself on and off okay so that's the first thing done the next thing we need to do is we need to tell these actors that whenever they spawn in the game world they start moving so we need to give them some type of movement So if we search for move or projectile movement, we've got this one here that we can add, which is projectile movement component. Click on that. And then we click on that, and now we can get um, some variables that we can adjust. So just to show this working, um, we'll go with something like fairly low. Um, so we'll go for maybe like an initial speed of 200, uh, and we'll go for max speed of 300. Or we might actually go a little lower than that, so initial speed will be 50 compile so I've taken them out of the game world so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop a few more of these back in um, we'll put them at stagger them at different places okay so what's happening now is they're now they're starting to move but you notice they just drop straight away um, and the reason for that being is their movement speed is is nowhere near high enough we go with say a thousand so I'm just opening it back up hit compile hit play so you notice now they move a little tiny bit before they fall off the map okay um, so it's looking like a little little bit better uh, are we gonna adjust this later on we're gonna pop back to this in a second and we're gonna modify these so we're happy with the way the bullet is dropping um, so the next thing that we're probably going to add is we're going to ask for a box collider as well. Um, and the reason we're going to have a box collider is now we can call on events whenever um, this bullet hits hits things. So we can even tell whenever it hits anything that maybe it destroys itself. So that way we don't have tons and tons and tons of bullets in the game world. Um, so I'm just going to really quickly just block this out around there. Okay. I compile. So the next thing we want to do is we want to somehow spawn these whenever we press that input. So we flick back to the first person character. So we've got our input fire. We know that works because we've done our print string. So what we want to do now is we want to spawn an actor. From class. Okay, we click on that. And straight away it's going to ask us which actor do you want to spawn. So we know that it's called BP bullet if we had compiled there we get an error so it's basically asking us uh, the error is saying that we don't have a valid transform so it doesn't know where it's going to make this object in the game world so if we go to the viewport um, and we have a look at this we've got a component here that's called muzzle um, and that sits on the end of the gun. So what we can do is we can grab that muzzle, drop it in here, and then we can pull off that and say, could you get the transform? And we notice here we got get world transform, and then we pop it in there. So now when we press fire, it's going to spawn an actor. We're telling it we want it to spawn the BP bullet actor. It's going to spawn them at the location of a thing called muzzle. And there we go. So that's working. So these bullets, <laughs> projectile is a bit crap looking at the minute. But essentially what's happening there is every time I hit the button, it's firing that actor. It's spawning that actor at the location, and because that actor has 
a projectile movement inside it, it's moving across the game world straight away. So then any changes we make to this will be updated uh, straight away. So if we come in here and we say, right, well, we want this to fire obviously a lot quicker. 2000, um, maybe our max speed's 3500. And we'll just move this slightly out of the way. So we hit play. it's firing and obviously you can keep adjusting uh, these variables until you're happy with it there you go so that's looking like a little bit better now and it's firing that across the game world okay so um just real quickly so all we did there was just make this um, blueprint actor called bullet it's got a particle system inside it it's got a projectile movement which makes it move across game world we put a box component in there because we're probably going to need it later on down the line um, and then in our first person character we're calling on an action which we've set in the project settings called fire um, it's just spawning the bullet at that location um, or just spawn the bullet and the transform that we're feeding the bullet is a thing called muzzle. Um, so just before when I clicked on, you might have noticed like this wasn't displaying, it's because my graphics card was doing something else. Um, so all that is, is that is just a an arrow component that we've added into the game world. Um, so the way that you can add them is you can add them just by adding a arrow. So if I'm not happy with where that's getting spawned or where it's sitting in the game world, we can adjust that. Um, so, for a minute, um, it's got it was slightly off for some reason. It's couple, like there was a little degree off. So there we go. So now that's firing, uh, just fine. So in the next video, what we'll probably do is we're going to set up a ammo counter, which is going to get checked here before it actually decides to start shooting. And in that way, if we've got no ammo, we we won't be able to fire the weapon.